That's right, back in the juice box here with Sam. Today we have the DeWalt power inverter, a 1000 watt inverter. We're going to put it on the juice box test bench, check it out, see if it lives up to its expectations, its advertising qualities, the good, the bad, the ugly of it. Let's go. All right, guys, let's play everyone's favorite game, What's in the Box? Hopefully it's kind of what we see here in pictures, right? Let's find out. Ooh, straight out of the box, we are greeted with, honestly, some grab handles. So let's grab these handles and just pull once the cardboard gets taken out of the way. Had you go in there for a second, didn't I? All right, there's other things in the box. We'll get to that in a second. Right off hand, ooh, ah, I am digging these little grab handles. I mean, are they needed? No, this thing is pretty lightweight. But are they cool? Absolutely. And in addition to that, we've got some little rubber feet here, some anti-shock pads here. When you mount it down, if you're blazing a trail, that thing's not gonna jiggle and rattle. Awesome. So up front, we've got the business side. We have our two AC outlets. We have three USB ports and an LCD display screen to tell us what is going on. On the top, DeWalt badge, 1000 watt power inverter, crooked sticker. Oh, that's a killer. Where's the quality control? Right side, nothing. Left side, nothing. Underside, a big old sticker. That one looks pretty straight, at least, down here where it doesn't matter. On the back of the unit, we have an intake or exhaust fan, not sure yet. Haven't powered it on, so we don't know. Then we have our negative connection for battery and our positive connection for battery. These are nice big plastic connectors, which allow you to unscrew, slide your cable crimp connection in there, and tighten it down with everything saying nice and safe, no battery shortages or arcs, hopefully will happen with this guy. Also in this box, we have a big yellow and black quick start guide. We have some wing nuts here. And then we have two sets of cables. First up are some pre-terminated, pre-crimped cables. This allows me to bolt right to my battery. This little square guy will go right into those connections, no problem. I have a positive cable and a negative. And then also in this kit comes two alligator clips. If you want to go old school and just connect to a battery on demand, you don't want to do any kind of hardwired bolted up setup, the Walt's got you covered with this as well. One thing worth pointing out, as I hold up these cables, the ones where you kind of do more of a permanent installation, there is no clear definitive labeling on these other than negative 40 degrees Celsius, 105 degrees Celsius. There's no stamp telling me voltage ratings or telling me wire gauge. In contrast to these guys, alligator clips, battery jumper style, these are properly stamped. They tell me 8 AWG, so 8 gauge, 600 volt rating, 105 degrees Celsius. So, a little concerning, a little bumming going on here that we've got some cheaper cables, some cables that honestly we don't know what's going on inside. It looks like we have got some copper plated tin wires just looking right here on the crimp side. But you know what? That's just what it is. Let's go ahead and get this thing set up to a battery, do some tests run some stuff, and man, wish we could fix that cricket sticker. I have the wires connected to the DeWalt power inverter, and now I'm ready to connect it to my lithium iron phosphate battery here. This is a 12 volt battery. I'm going to go ahead and connect the positive wire first, making sure that the washers on the bolts are on top of this connector. You want to make sure you're connecting on the wire right on top of the terminal or lugs on these batteries. That way you get a good solid connection and you don't have any risk of power loss or heat buildup. Before I connect the negative, I'm going to be using this little guy. This is a 30 ohm resistor, in theory. 
because I've seen it work and not work on camera sometimes. When you touch this to the wire, then you touch it to the battery lead, you wait a couple of seconds and it's charging the capacitors in the inverter slowly. Otherwise, when you touch it, you will see a big pop, a spark, and things can get damaged, especially inside the inverter. So we'll go ahead and hold it here and there. Go ahead and count to 15, 20 perhaps, hopefully long enough to charge those. All right, it's been long enough, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this off, put it on the battery. Hopefully we don't have a spark. Good, nothing sparked. That means that little resistor did its job. We got lucky this time. I'm gonna tighten down the negative lug, and then we are all good. The battery is connected to the inverter. Now we can turn the inverter on and power it up. Well, that's the same thing, isn't it? Guys, I have a four slice toaster plugged into the inverter, and this unit as of itself, when both of these sides are on, will consume close to 1500 watts, well over the power capacity and rating of the inverter. What I'm going to do is turn on half of this toaster first. We'll watch the status on the screen and should see something around 750 watts of output. We'll run that for a little while, see how it handles the load, and then I'm going to turn on this side of the toaster, which will max out the capacity and surpass what this is rated for. At that point, we'll want to see how long it runs, what the display screen tells us, and then see what kind of safety precautions over voltage, over current sensors and shutdown procedures this little guy does do. All right, that toaster has settled down right around 735 watts. Let's go ahead and turn on this other side. This will overload the inverter. So let's keep an eye on what this thing does, what kind of beeps we have, and see what happens. That was awesome. The overcurrent protection kicked in immediately, very, very quickly. It didn't try and run things beyond capacity very long until those safety measures kicked in and it turned off the inverter, then fired off the alarm and the beeps. The thing I really like most about it is it was as simple as pressing the power button to turn it off, turn it back on, and it resets, performs its self-checks, and you're good to go. It is so nice to see that the DeWalt has that kind of functionality built into it. Perhaps they know it's going to happen and they make it super easy just by turning it off and back on again. It means you don't have to disconnect your wires because if you got this thing installed in a truck or at a job site or somewhere much more hardwired together, having to take it off, disconnect the wires and do things on the back side of it would just be a hassle. They've really got you covered on this one and that's nice. The next thing I want to do is test out those USB ports. I have a Klein multimeter designed just for USB power. It's going to tell us how many volts we get, how stable that is, and then we can plug up something to it to charge to see what kind of true output and power supply we get from it. Here's a look at the Klein Tools ET920 USB digital multimeter. This little guy is great for testing your voltage, amps and power draws with your USB connections. A tool such as this is getting more and more handy nowadays as tons of consumer electronics are going to be USB powered. I'm going to go ahead and use the type A USB connection but it also gives you a type C if you want to test that stuff. We'll go ahead and plug it into the ports here and here we see that it's currently pushing out 5.15 volts and we're using zero amps. Perfect. That multimeter shows that we have stable power output right at the 5 volt mark, which is exactly what we want for our electronics. We'll go ahead and test port number 2, see that that is the same, that looks good. And USB port number 3, see how this little guy does. Perfect. Perfect 5.15 volt output on all three ports, and that is great. I have one of my battery powered studio lights here and I'm going to plug it up to charge. So get this guy ready, and we'll see how well it does. That is a stable 5.04 volts under load, pushing out right at 1.3839 amps, and that is perfect. I love seeing how stable the voltage and the amperage is. It shows that this is a high quality inverter, 
it's not fluctuating on power it's having no problems doing this and it's not going to be likely to blow up my sensitive electronics because we just don't want that happening for my next test i'm going to be using an infrared thermometer i want to take temperature readings of the surface the case probably the in and out as far as air passing through the inverter and then i want to fire it up let it run the toaster pretty much non-stop 750 watts and see what kind of heat generation we have first off right here our countertop is reading 73.3 degrees fahrenheit the top of the case 71.2 the front side here 69 degrees and then the back side here is also 69 to 70 degrees it has been off for a while this is its resting ambient temperature and it is pretty much equilibrated to the room as much as it's probably going to without a really long extended time of just sitting here and not being powered on we're going to turn this toaster on and let it run this is a 750 watt power draw i want to let it run for about five minutes and then we'll check temperatures after that That's the first time it's ever been turned on. So the smoke you're seeing, this is a brand new toaster. Don't get concerned, we don't have a fire. It's just the first time that side has been turned on. All right guys, five minutes into it, let's check our temperatures. So the tabletop right here is at about 78 degrees. The top of the inverter, 79, 80 degrees. So we'll say 80. This front panel, reading about 80 degrees. And then this back, the back got as high as 92.4 degrees Fahrenheit. So overall, we're only at about 92 degrees coming out on the back. That's not bad at all. The case has heated up a little bit, but some of this may be residual heat coming from that toaster as well. We're using a heat producing source to test this inverter so it just stands to make sense five minutes of being next to a toaster some of that heat is going to get moved around the room over five minutes of use with the toaster at 730 watts to 750 watts range not bad at all how do i cancel the toast oh you turn this all the way to the left Guys, this DeWalt is really kicking chicken. What I want to try and do next is get as close as I can to that 1000 watt threshold without surpassing it. See if I can load this thing down to the max, run it for that another five minute or so test and see how warm or hot the unit gets. Same thing with the cables, everything of the sort. All right, a little behind the scenes magic. This is the juice box lights back there. So we'll go ahead and plug it up to the inverter. Turn it on. All right, can you guys hear those lights buzzing? Yeah, those were not buzzing before. So that's indicative of dirty power. Not pure sine wave coming out of that thing. Not as clean as we want. So the light buzzing, we cannot consider that for this because as I look through the manual, this inverter is a modified sine wave so with a modified sine wave and with led lights you can expect that so let's go ahead and forget about the buzz but what we can take away from it is that if you don't want the buzz if you don't want this kind of noise from your lights make sure you get a pure sine wave inverter as it is advertised and sold and everything this is a good inverter so let's not let my fixation on buzzing lights derail us from the fact that this is still 100% as advertised, and I'm still really happy with it. There we go. That makes me happier now. It's straight. So, what are my thoughts of the DeWalt DXAEPI 1000 Type 2 power inverter? This guy. It's actually pretty good. My number one complaint is not the fault of this guy. It is actually this guy who bought it. 
I assumed it was a pure sine wave or figured it would be, but it's not. Oh well, me live and learn. Can't fault this guy, it never advertised anything it wasn't. You're still good, don't worry DeWalt. There's still room for you in the juice box. The case being metal is great. This thing has been on for a very long time and it is not even warm to the touch. Never did it get hot. Even with the cables and everything pulling about 15 amps or so through the battery into this, it never got hot. So no worries about running this thing, whether in your home or in your juice box shed, your workshop or on your vehicle, this is what you would expect. From the name of DeWalt, you expect quality and this guy lives up to it. If you've got questions or comments, is there something I did not cover with this guy that you were really hoping I would have? Let me know. Ask me down below in the comments. If you got other content you would love to see, or if you just enjoy seeing alternative energy, energy production, solar panels, wind, energy storage, and off-the-shelf product reviews of such technology, hopefully you'll subscribe and stick around because that is what the juice box is all about. Otherwise, take care. I'll see you guys next time in the juice box.